you got to think about it. Mike and I still, still to this day, market and follow up to our very first uh, driver for dollars list that we put together in 2019. So we're not with the whole trash list or anything like that. We're still hitting them. Uh, I don't even do acquisitions that much. And I still follow up with my list that I bought that me and Michael um, put together. 10 to 15,000. You know, $500,000 in assignments. $150,000. First of all, introduce yourself. Tell us where you guys are uh, located. Okay. Uh, my name is Jerry Pearson. Um, we do deal. I'm a real estate investor and we do deals in the central Texas market, which is Colleen, Temple, Waco, and Austin. Okay. All right. And tell us, uh, and you guys can kind of tag team this, but tell us how this all started, your kind of journey into real estate investing and how you got to where you guys are at right now. Um, I got into real estate because I got fired from my job and I, I found another job and then I quit because I figured there had to be a better way. Um, I ended up stumbling across a Facebook ad uh, which talked about wholesaling and it just sounded way too good to be true. Um, did some YouTube University, of course, the Max Maxwell, uh, the Facebook groups that he had going on, did some studying, uh, hit the ground running January of 2019. And within 45 days, I had my first $5,000 assignment fee uh, from calling the for sale by owners off of Zillow. Hot dang. All right. You'd crush that challenge. Right, right. <laughs> so tell me how you two ended up being together because you guys started on two different waves. Like, how did this partnership come together? Right. So I was already a few deals in and I had like this huge wall up and uh, Michael and I met at the uh, at the auction, you know, where you find the cash buyers at. And we were both just working the room. Uh, Michael, Michael was on crutches. He had just had like ACL surgery. And then I just noticed, you know, we, we sort of passed and passing, you know, and, uh, he, I found out he did the same thing as me, but he was moving just as, just as fast as me, you know, looking for cash buyers. And then we sort of just, just stayed in contact after that. And then finally we just came together, put our driver for dollars list together and just started crushing it. Dude, that's awesome. Like how, so you said you had this wall up. What brought that wall down as someone who I also would have that wall. And so what, for those who are like, cause I know partnerships, I've seen a lot of partnerships like this work out. So what brought that wall down and how, how did that work out? So what brought the wall down was, um, he just added value, you know, and that was the biggest thing. So that, that was the biggest thing. He added value. So when I met him that first time, like I said, I was a few deals in, so I'm not even gonna lie. My ego is like way up here. I don't need anybody. <laughs> like nobody's getting getting in my way of making money because I was in like survival mode at that time. Like I was getting a lot of, uh, I'm blessed to say it was small deals, five five k deals, six k deals. So I didn't have my first deal wasn't like sixty five k or anything like that to where I could let off the gas pedal. Like I had to keep going. So uh, my first time meeting him, he was like, hey man, I got a buyer for that deal you have. And it didn't end up working out with that buyer, but he was just constantly adding value. But the one that really set it off was uh, he had, he was working on his second deal and he was like, hey man, ride with me. And I rode with him. Um, he's talking with the seller. He was just like, hey man, you know, can you take some pictures for me? And I took some pictures of the property and then boom, he opened up title and, you know, it went through this process. And then he texts me out of nowhere. He's just like, hey, man, uh, signed this JV agreement. I was like, what? I was like, nah, I'm not I'm not signing a JV agreement. I didn't do I didn't have anything to do with that property. He was like, no, I just want you to sign the JV agreement, man. Um, you know, you helped me out with the with the property. I think that fee was like twelve thousand dollars. So I was like, OK. Wall is all the way, yeah. Wall is down. Um, he, I was like, he knows what he's talking about. Um, I'm in survival mode. Let's run it up. 
<laughs> and then it just kind of from there, you guys just decided to just continue working together. It sounds like. From then on out, it was uh, it was 50 50 everything. And we, we didn't even technically become legit business partners until like a year later. But I mean, I'm talking about leads came my way. There's some houses that he's never even seen before or heard of but I'm still sending him the JV agreement. So it, it was no side deals or anything like that. Like we just split everything 50, 50. And so how long has this partnership been in? How long have you guys been partners then? Let's see the end of 2019. So a little over three years now, over three years now. Wow. So getting into, cause I know I want, I want to talk about these deals. Um, and you don't have to talk about all of them, um, but how many since starting with Deal Machine have you guys closed thus far? Man, <laughs> it's been so many, all of them. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I put it. So I put it in the. I put it in the questionnaire. Like, yeah, I put it in the questionnaire. A hundred plus, and like, you got to think about it. Mike and I still, still to this day market and follow up to our very first uh, driver for dollars list that we put together in 2019. So we're not with the whole trash list or anything like that. We're still hitting them. Uh, I don't even do acquisitions that much. And I still follow up with my list that I bought that me and Michael um, put together. So all of our lists basically start at the driver for dollars. Then we stack it against all of the other data that we have, but that's our bread and butter. That's the best list to have. I love that. And I, I love that you guys are still hitting those lists. And, and like you said, not just throwing them away, because I think a lot of people do the, the follow up is where a lot of people fall off. So you guys are already continuing to kill it and probably still getting deals off of that first list three, you know, three plus years later. <laughs> We just closed one a few few months ago. That was off of our, our very first list. It was a very complex real estate <laughs> issue going on. And it took a whole lot of following up and a whole lot of due diligence, but we got it done. Okay, well, let's dive into that then. Can you talk me through, I would love to hear just maybe like one or two deals that you feel like um, our community could take value from of like, well, that one sounds like don't give up on a deal, even if it's really freaking messy. So I'd love to hear that one. <laughs> yeah. So um, that one, that was more like a um, like, you know, whenever you get a deal on the contract, you're super excited. Right. You are you may have the buyer already lined up. You're already counting the assignment fee and then boom, the title commitment comes back. And it's the ugliest thing that you've ever seen in your life. Right. So with this particular issue right here, um, his whole generation died off. Okay. So, um, aunt left the aunts owned the house. Aunt and uncle owned the house. Uncle died back in the 1950s. Aunt died in the 1990s. Okay. So the nephew who, who we were dealing with, got the aunt's portion of the property. Well, guess what? Uncle had a probate, but it was never filed. So uncle's side of the family all died off. He had four siblings, nobody had kids. So the last person died in 2018. Oh, Mind blowing, gosh. never seen anything like that. On top of that, the nephew who we're dealing with He's like 82 years old. So I don't know about you, but if my uncle by marriage, I wouldn't know his family. I, I wouldn't know. Yeah, you, you don't know. Well, if he died in the 1950s, like I'm not gonna, yeah, no. Like where where would you find where that? Would you, where would you find that information at? Um, so we're really good at finding people. So you're talking about doing an affidavit of airship for somebody who died back in, you know, the 1950s. So we're really good at finding people. Um, you know, we utilize white pages, we utilize um, ancestry.com to find heirs and just anybody in the community. But 
I'm gonna be honest, since we're on this show, we did not find them. We got the we got a lawyer involved and he helped us out a lot. But <laughs> so what did you end up doing? Like how did you end up having to do that? Did you have to just be like, listen, here's all the proof in the pudding. There is no one that can take this so, off. So that was us, you know. Um that was us. We we could not find anybody. We couldn't even find anybody in the community that could help us out. Uh, we ended up taking that to our real estate lawyer, and and he took care of the rest. Um, maybe Mike can give you a better understanding of it, but yeah, we took it straight to him. Dang, you guys are Sherlock Holmes and and Watson right there, just trying to find out all the the things about people. <laughs> I love it, and it and it helps. You know, you know, we're we're here to solve solutions so anytime that you know we get a title commitment back uh we have to be able to well i think it helps if you're able to explain to the seller exactly what's going on with the title yeah. what you may need from them because granted the title company has hundreds maybe thousands of files that they're working on um, and they'll get to you when they get to you but if you could break down what's going on with title to the seller and sort of get ahead of the curve and knock some things out. A lot of this stuff is public assets right at your county clerk's office. You just got to pull it. Well, I'm sure that puts them at ease too then. Uh, when you're, and also probably more trust in you guys being like, oh, wow, they put this much effort into my, you know, case. And and so they really do want to help me out. And, and it, all that stuff can get so overwhelming and confusing and they're so vulnerable already. I mean, that's just so nice that you bring that extra kind of comfort to them of, oh, this is what's gonna happen. Oh, this is what we have to work through. 